So, we have several items before us. And then instead of turning, just for the record, when we don't have a quorum, um, what is the end result? It, if I understand it correctly, uh, we can have a public comment period today, but we have to repeat this again in council, or we can go to my recommendations now as a report and allow for the public to occur in councils and won't be repeated. It, w would I be accurate in saying that? Yes, Terry Kaufman, Macias City Attorney's Office. Uh, under the Brown Act, well, you, you don't really have a meeting today because it's just one. So you, you can take testimony, but people will be able to speak when it goes to council. And, it, and this will just go up without a recommendation, just as a communication. Okay. Now, I share this with the audience because I know many of you took time off, battled parking, actually found parking, found your way here, waited 10 to 15 minutes to start, and to hear this news, I'm, I imagine is not the glad tidings you expected. But I also know that traffic hour is going to kick in in full steam in about an hour or two. We have committee processes. We have quite a few cards on these items. And you will be heard again. And I will have to conduct public hearing in council when it comes before the council. So I'm not trying to dissuade you from speaking today. Do not get me wrong. I want to respect the fact that you took the time to be here today. So I'm going to go through the agenda, and we can decide for ourselves. You want to wait here another hour or two, maybe three, depending on how long we go. Or Madam Clerk has a terrified look in her face. <laughs> or we can, I can go through my recommendation as chair of committee and hold the public comment and move it to council and then you don't have to speak today to save time. I leave it to you. I'm here to serve you. I'm more than welcome to go through each card at two minutes each or we can do the other option which is I'll go through my deliberation, make my recommendations and hold the public comment for the council, because legally, that's what's required. So I'm going through the process, and if you feel compelled to speak because you did take the time to come here today, I want to acknowledge that and respect that as well. So we'll take this one step at a time. So that being said, Roberto will go through the agenda, and uh, I have cards on items two and five. And um, Okay, I'll, if they, if they choose to do that, okay. I was just giving a note saying you should hear public comment on five, and I'm saying yes, I want to, but if they choose not to, then we can wait till council. So it's up to you. So let's go through the agenda, uh, Roberto. And let's start with the item number one. Uh, yes, Councilor Adam Mendez, a CIA report. Uh, it's relative to a request from Building and Safety for 568,568 from the Construction Services Trust Fund uh, to fund the automatic cashier system and also uh, the department's test lab. And I believe the CAO recommended approval. And my recommendation would be to approve the CAO recommendation to approve funding in the amount of 568,568 from the Construction Services Trust Fund for the replacement of the cash assistance serving construction services centers, the test lab, and the deployment of six service payment kiosks at the construction services centers. And that will be the recommendation. And there are no cards on this item. Next item, Roberto. Uh, item two, Council One is a city attorney ordinance amended the municipal code as a list of definition of the term hillside area. Okay. Here's the big drum roll. We have one, two, three persons on the queue. Um, do, do the three persons feel compelled to speak? If you say yes, 
we can go through the number to you. Yes? All right. You made the trip. You're here. I welcome it. Okay, so we'll have that as a special. The next item. Uh, item three, Councilman, is a report from the uh, Director of Planning and the Planning Commission. It relates to a general plan amendment, sound change, high district change. It's for a 320 unit mixed use project in CD9. And we recommend consent. Number four. Uh, item four, Councilman, is a report from the Staff Valley APC. It's a sound change. Uh, for the construction of a six-lot single-family subdivision in CD6. Okay, we do have a uh, Vizzy Levi. No one's okay. Do not be moving to consent on that one. Next item. Uh, next item, Councilman's item five is an appeal by David Carrera from the Little and Lower Neighborhood Coalition. Rob Gushan is the representative. It relates to an action of the Central APC, which adopted an MND for a track map for a one lot subdivision for 11 condo units in CD13. Now, we have quite a few cards on this item. Do folks who submitted cards would like to speak on this item today, or do you want to hold off to a committee? You do want to speak? Then we hold it special. We'll give it an opportunity to speak. Okay, five has been called special, 25. Number six, I know cards, can we six please? Uh, six council has actually been, con been continued to the May 4th meeting. It's an appeal by the Studio City Partners as released to an action of the zoning administrator which imposed corrective conditions uh, as to the use of the planning lines super, super club uh, on Ventura Boulevard and CD2. Okay, that's been continued. Yes. All right, we'll continue on May 4th in Perm and hopefully in Council on May 21st. And there are, we will not have a Director of Planning's Royal Status Report, so and there's no cards on that one either. But we do thank Gail for her hard work and uh, the staff as well. So, Roberto, that takes us to where? Uh, back that to takes us that back to item two, the hillside area definition item, Council. Can we get a report from the staff on item two? Good afternoon, Eric Lopez, City Planning. Um, this is the fourth uh, time this uh, particular ordinance has been before your committee. Uh, essentially, um, this ordinance is. What you, um, the result of the procedural uh, correction that uh, had to occur. Uh, normally, uh, ordinances get referred to the city attorney after they leave this particular committee. In this case, it, uh, the ordinance went to the city council without having gone through that step. Uh, so what you see now is the uh, hillside area map as amended by the city council on September 23rd. Uh, and also as amended to reflect uh, the information, is, uh, well, to indicate where the information for that map uh, resides. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of process, how many times have we had a public hearing on this one? Uh, public hearing, let's see. Uh, Can we, I had, we had five kickoff meetings uh, last uh, February. Uh, then we had the public hearing and city planning commission meeting at the same time, uh, and then had uh, three uh, three pl uh, plum committee meetings uh, the last time around with one city council meeting as well. Okay. With lots of meetings with uh, individual uh, community groups in between. Okay. Um, and that's the summary report. Uh, for the most part, yeah. I'm trying okay. to keep it short. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we'll go to the cards. We have before us uh, Mr. Dr. Clyde Williams, then Barry Johnson, and then we have Jack Allen. Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. Last year we had a hillside ordinance for Northeast LA, El Sereno. It included ridge lines, and there were specific conditions related to the ridge lines. Uh, the staff of the planning department 
don't know how to define ridge lines, and thereby within the hillside ordinance system, they need to have not only a hillside definition, but also a rigorous ridge line definition because that will control how many square feet within 50 feet of that ridge line. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Our next speaker, Barry Johnson. Barry Johnson. Please give us your name and address. Um, 4166 Farmdale Studio City, and I'm with the Studio City Residents Association. Um, on Thursday, we have an RFA going before the CPC in Van Nuys. Just for the record, RFA is? Um, is a... Um, Residential floor area. Residential floor area. Sorry, I Just forget. for the folks who are listening. Um, and on this map in, in the gold on the top, you can see all the flatlands of Studio, Cities, Studio City that's part of this RFA. The pink areas are on the bottom are south of Ventura Boulevard that would become part of this RFA under this uh, ordinance. We have already noticed the pink areas regarding our hearing on Thursday. We have had not one complaint of the from the pink area. We, we've had a few from the gold, but it's as far as the pink area that were formally, you know, as of now designated hillside that we're trying to change by this ordinance, not one complaint. They are, seem to be happy going into uh, the flatlands designation. And um, we strongly recommend that you support the planning department on this ordinance. And it will make our RFA much even stronger. Um, and we intend to go forward with the um, hillside version of the RFA as soon as it is passed for the rest of the uh, R1 area you see on the top of, uh, I mean, on the bottom of the map between the pink and Mulholland Drive. Thank okay, you. Okay, so you agree with the staff? Yes, all right. Mr. Jack Allen. Good afternoon, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jack Allen, uh, president of the Palisades Preservation Association. Um, I live at Bester Boulevard in Pacific Palisades. We've been waiting 13 years for this <laughs> ordinance to go through. And so we'd love to see it through, and we want to see that hillside part put go through. I should just say, and everybody in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> Great. Thank you, sir. All right, so that will be uh, the end of for this committee, but we're going to have to do it again in council. Uh, and the action would be, recommendation would be to approve the city attorney prepared ordinance amending the term hillside area in the municipal code and establishment of a new planning department hillside area map. Are we okay with it though? Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the next one. Uh, next item, councilman, is item five. This is the appeal on the track map and CD13 for the 11 condo units. Okay. And congratulations staff on number two and for the Palos Verde Association for waiting 13 years. Congratulations. All right. So that was five. Can we have the staff to come on up? Please give us your name and your position. Good afternoon, uh, Councilman. Joey Vasquez, Planning Department, Subdivision Unit. What you have before you is a track that was approved for a 11 residential condominium project with one unit doesn't mean very low income housing unit. Uh, three of the 11 units are density bonus units. Um, brief history. Uh, the applicant requested uh, two density bonus incentives, one to permit a front yard setback of 12 feet in lieu of the required 15 feet, and two, a height increase to 36 feet in lieu of the permitted 30 feet. Uh, the advisory agency approved the front yard setback, but denied the height increase. The, op the applicant also filed a zoning administrative adjustment case to permit a five foot rear yard in lieu of the required 15 feet, which was approved. Uh, three appeals were filed on this, two appeals on the tract and one in the ZA case, which went to the Central Area Planning Commission. Uh, the Central Area Planning Commission sustained the action 
of the advisory agency and the AZA in approving the tract and the zoning administrator adjustment. Um, as the central APC had no jurisdiction on the hiding, hiding center of appeal, they referred the appeal to the City Planning Commission. Um, the City Planning Commission on December 10th of 2009 granted the height increase to 36 feet and uh, approved the density bonus. So that was, that's final, which for clarification is not before this committee. Uh, just a word about commercial parking, uh, which may be brought up. At the time the applicant filed uh, their track map, they felt they had non-conforming rights to uh, commercial parking. It was determined that the CUP had expired and that they were required to file a new CUP. Uh, so the, the current appeal, uh, there are two issues. One, inadequate environmental, and second, that the findings cannot be made on the track map. Um, the environmental staff did a reconsideration on the environmental. They added six conditions uh, which you have a copy of. So we're asking the committee to adopt these uh, conditions. Also, uh, for consistency's sake, with the City Planning Commission action improving the height, we're requesting that the committee add a condition which references the commission action. And finally, um, also requesting that condition number 10 be modified so that if the ZA case for the commercial parking is not approved that the applicant has to submit a track modification. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All if right. Questions, now, I'm available. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Well done. Um, Madam Attorney, can we just be, I guess, laser sharp as to what is in front of us? Because various issues were raised. Terry Kaufman, Mesilla City Attorney's Office. The, the only thing in front of the um, committee and council is the tentative map case. The density bonus case uh, ended at City Planning Commission, so that's not in front of you. And the, um, the future case uh, dealing with the conditional use approval for commercial parking, that, that is going forward. It hasn't gone forward yet. So we're just dealing with the map at this point. Okay. Uh, thank you for that summary. What I'd like to do is ask the apparent I'd like to step forward. Uh, there are several folks who have been, I'm not staying on the record, we have Mr. Carrera, but you also have a representative who submitted a card, so I'd like to leave it up to you to see who would you like to speak first. Would like to see you speak first. Uh, I think the representative I'd like to have speak first. All right. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Councilman. My name is Steve Kaplan from the firm Luna Glushan. Uh, we've just submitted a letter indicating our three points uh, in support of the appeal, but I'm only going to speak to one of them, and that's with respect to the findings uh, on the vesting tentative track map. I just want to call to your attention that this is, in fact, a vesting map, and when the city approves a vesting map, what it, it entails is, is that the developer is protected from subsequent changes in, in rules, but in return, he promises to build and only build what's shown on the map and the, and the attached plans to the project. Project. That being the case, the attached plans show commercial parking, which is in violation of the general plan and the, and the Hollywood community plan. So what you're doing here today is you're approving a map, and you can't make the findings about the consistency with the general plan, and notwithstanding what staff may have said about subsequent, subsequent actions uh, asking for the track modification condition, the fact is this committee's recommendation and the city council's approval of the vesting tentative track map is inappropriate because you cannot make the findings with general plan consistency at this moment. Yes, there is a uh, CUP or a variance, I'm not sure which he filed, to um, make the commercial parking uh, 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 part of the project, but at the moment it is against the general plan provisions in the Hollywood plan. So today's recommendation and the City Council's recommendation, uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to make the findings that the map is consistent with the general plan. So I would like to, you know, if the City Attorney would like to opine on that subject, it would be appreciated, but I just want to make a record that I believe that this action is premature today. Thank you. Okay, we can next. Mr. Co your name and address for the record. David Carrera, 6530 Leland Way. Uh, I want to speak to two points regarding MND. 
first, when this project was originally being heard and decided in June 2008, comments were made by the community contending that the LMD was inadequate and that it omitted the commercial parking in a residential zone aspect of the development. Nothing on the record disputed the community's concerns and nothing on the record shows the city considered the comments. The determination of the case before you was based on that LMD and the LMD as originally published was later adopted by the Area Planning Commission. Then almost a year later, the city reconsiders the MND with significant changes to the project description and republishes the MND. So the city had finally acknowledged that the original project description was deficient and that all reasonably foreseeable direct physical changes to the environment or necessary land use entitlements were not disclosed. Therefore, based on the city's own actions and substantial evidence in the record, the previously adopted MND was inadequate. And as such, the MND and any land use entitlement associated with the MND should be considered invalid. My second comment concerning, concerns the reconsidered MND published in October of 2009. Again, comments were made by the community and evidence submitted to support those comments that there were inadequacies with the reconsidered MND and those comments were once again dismissed. For example, regarding the height, nothing on the block is over 25 feet, so we submitted photos and heights of every building on the block. We also submitted case ZA 2006-87-ZB-0 from May 2006. This is a case at 6543 Leland Way. One matter from the project in front of you. And in that case, the city denied granting a height adjustment. The ZA, Michael LeGrand, who was just here, found that the granting of the height adjustment would not be compatible to the surrounding uses since most homes within the local vicinity. Uh, can I have one minute off of one of your public speakers? Go ahead. Um, consist of one two-story homes that go as high as 26 to 36 feet in height. Now, this condition in the neighborhood has not changed. Nothing in the neighborhood has changed. So, the project before you has granted the extra height under SB 1818. We understand that. And we contend that one state law, SB 1818, does not cancel out another state law, CEQA. Mitigation measures must address the impacts directly relating to the project's height and could include something like the following, that no portion of the building is visible from the public right of way is the perpendicularly across Leland Way um, at, say, an eye level of five feet that shall exceed 30 feet in height. So what we're saying is the way to mitigate it, they still get their height, but it needs to be mitigated according to CEQA. This would, um, this would reduce the project's impact on the surrounding area to less than significant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carrera. Now, the back of the applicants on record was Mr. Carrera, correct? Uh, let me check. And that would be... No, the applicant is Leland Condon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The appellant is Mr. Carrera. The appellant is Mr. Carrera. Yeah. Who's the only one on record? He's the appellant, and the applicant, which is, I believe, the owner, is Leland Condominium. I got you. Yeah. Uh, I'm at, the reason why I'm asking is I wanted to give the appellants a chance to first state their issues, and we've given them the time to do that. So both the... A parent and his representative were given ample time to define the reason for their appeal. Now I ask the applicant, and we do have um, Robert R. Sons, I believe, and we have Isabel Berita, Berita. and so. Are uh, both of you considered the applicants and applicant representative? Uh, who would like to speak first? Good afternoon, Good Chairman. Afternoon. Uh, I'd like to uh, reserve about 30 seconds for Mr. William D. Ross. He'd like to make a point, and I'll go about a minute and a half, if I may. Well. You both get your, your two minutes as applicant. I want to give you okay. flexibility as much as I gave the flexibility to the appellant. So Mr. Ross would like to submit a card. He should do so if he can speak. And then we can go from there. Okay. Uh, 
I'd like to respond to several of the points that were brought up by the appellant, if I may. Again, my name is Isabel Berretta, and I represent Leland Condominiums, LLC. First, with respect to the findings of the vesting map, the staff correctly determined that findings were all made for the approval of the map. In terms of the map itself showing a commercial parking level, the map findings and conditions clearly provide that if the applicant wishes to continue to use the property for commercial parking, he'll have to apply for a CUP and other approvals that are necessary. Therefore, if the VTT is approved at the next council meeting, it is clear from the conditions of the VTT that no commercial would be approved until the applicant obtains the adequate uh, approvals. That's number one. Number two, as far as uh, consistency with the general plan, the v VTT is consistent with the general plan as staff has found because the housing element, one of the primary goals of the housing element is to provide affordable housing, and this project does that. As far as being a premature action, this is not a premature action. The applicant is seeking for the approval of a VTT with 11 condominiums. He's not seeking for approval of the VTT with the commercial parking at this point. The reason why you have a map with a commercial parking level depicted is that when the applicant applied for the VTT, he believed that the parking there was legally non-conforming and that's why you have the commercial parking. But the applicant understands that he will not have the right until he obtains the required approvals. And just for the record, can you define VTT? The Vesting Tentative Track Map. Okay, just for the hearing public. As far as the reconsideration, when the applicant initially applied for this commercial for this project, the applicant indicated that he was intending to have commercial parking, and later a reconsideration was adopted to clarify that, so that it is adequate. You could continue if you like. You're done? I have one more point. Uh, okay, good. Like we'll finish your point. Um, the additional point, uh, Chair, is that with respect to the determination of consistency, the applicable standard is that of the general plan guidelines of 2003 issued by the State Office of Planning and Research as are judicially confirmed. Those standards mean that you don't just isolate one policy of a general plan to determine consistency. You look at them all and if they further without hindering the policies of the general plan, which is the situation here under both the Subdivision Map Act and the ordinance of the city, then consistency can be found. Further, the evaluation of staff is entitled to great weight consistent with that interpretation. So under judicially confirmed standards, consistency can be made. We would also you know, respectfully request that that type of opposition argument should have been raised below so that it could properly be briefed before Plum. Thank you. Can you just state for the record your name and address? I'm sorry. William D. Ross. It's also the same as Ms. Beretta, 520 South Grand, Suite 300, Los Angeles, California, 90071. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we've heard from the appellants and the applicants. Uh, let's go with the other speaker cards. And you have two minutes. So many of you might have written a letter very eloquent letters, but if you can get to your point, uh, sometimes it's, it's, uh, they find themselves, I got one more paragraph and they run out of uh, time, so um, please get to your point. And if a previous speaker has already made your point, it's okay to say I agree with the previous speaker and give us anything new or different for the record. So that being said, I'd like to call up Scott Campbell, then Maria Hinton, then Victor Ortiz, and then we'll end with Marilyn Williams. Please come on up. Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell here. Your left. Maria Hinton. My name is Maria Hinton. Good afternoon. I live afternoon. at 6537 Leland Way, the property that's directly uh, east of this uh, condo project. And uh, I want to say that I completely support David Carrera's comments. Many of us stakeholders in the neighborhood have been involved in this um, battle. Uh, for quite a quite a few years now and have attended many meetings in this building as well as many meetings in the neighborhood. Um, this is a very heartfelt, passionate um, place for us to be. 
We um, are concerned at this point, the height has been granted. Um, we're concerned at this point with uh, also the rear setback and we want to make sure that it is reflected on the map that for the number of feet that have been granted in height that the rear setback be reflected uh, to uh, show on the map and uh, be in the record. Thank you. Thank you. Big Ortiz, Mary Williams, and we have Susan McCann. Mr. Ortiz here. Good afternoon, sir. Please give us your name and address. Uh, my name is Victor Ortiz. I reside at 6510 Leland Way, LA 90028. Uh, I've been to a lot of these meetings also, and, I, and uh, I just want to make make a point is that we're not against the project, but we want it to work with the neighborhood. And so that's a very small street. It's a very narrow street. My car has been hit by the number of clubs that are in the area, people trying to park. And so I'm concerned with more traffic on that street, but people either coming in or out from the condos or the parking structure would just make a already bad situation worse. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Williams. And then Susan McCann. And then I'll ask the deputy from District 13 uh, to sum up. My name is Marilyn Williams. I live at 6515 Leland Way. And uh, I am just here to make a passionate plea about this commercial parking. I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand half of what was said here. So I have to apologize for the BTTs and all that stuff. Um, but I do know that we have a lot of children on our street. We are a neighborhood. We are a very close-knit neighborhood. I've never seen anything like this in Hollywood or L.A. before. I've been there for 17 years. I've been to all the meetings to oppose this project. Now we're just asking them to work with us. Putting commercial parking and having it on Leland Way is going to affect all the children on our block. It's going to affect our safety. They have told us that, well, if there's no parking in the street, you can park in, in our underground parking. I will not, at night, walk through underground parking by myself. I don't think it's necessary. They can use Sunset. I just oppose the commercial parking completely. And I wish I could cite you some cases, but I can't. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So then McCann. My name is Susan McCann. I live on 6526 Leland Way. I also oppose the project, uh, but I want to work with the people who want to build this project that is unfortunately going to be um, difficult with both commercial and also the, um, the height that they want. I'm, I want to reiterate what David Carrera said. Um, they were given 36 feet. If they were to get 36 feet, we want to see on the map that it shows that the rear um, uh, will go back to 11 feet. So um, that's what I'm most concerned about, that it's not yet reflected, and I want to see that on the map. I also say that it's an amazing street. We are a community, and there isn't room for the commercial parking at this stage with an entrance on Leland Way, a very small street. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Catherine Hennigan, representing District 13. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Catherine Hennigan on behalf of Council President Eric Garcetti. This case has been particularly controversial and problematic due to the issues related to neighbor the neighborhood character and the cumulative impact. In addition to the procedural and legal, legal issues regarding the city's SB 1818 implementation ordinance and the filing of this case, our office continues to be concerned about the cumulative impact of this project. Factors contributing to our concerns include the granting of a variance for a year, year uh, rear yard reduction, three density bonus incentives, which includes increased FAR, a front yard reduction, and additional height. This project will include 29 residential parking spaces and the continued maintenance of 49 commercial parking spaces. The applicant has also filed for a variance in CUP in order to allow for commercial parking in this residential zone. Throughout this process, our office has felt this is too much. The intent of the density bonus ordinance as it relates to providing affordable housing is to incentivize the development of affordable housing. This project creates one affordable unit. The height was granted by the City Planning Commission on December 10th after the MND was updated to include the commercial parking and recirculated. Throughout the multiple hearings related to this case, our office has testified that the increased height was not needed in order to build the affordable unit, but to build a commercial parking structure and condo project. 
This is not the objective of the density bonus ordinance. If the applicant chose to take the commercial parking out of the plan, they could build a one level, one level of subterranean residential parking with 11 units on top and have stayed within the 30 foot height requirement and residential zoning. We continue to feel that the height and mass of this project is too large. We support affordable housing and we support the use of the density bonus ordinance as long as it's implemented correctly, following the intent of council to protect residential neighborhoods. Our office recognizes the need for adequate parking, but also encourages smart development. We want to make sure that the neighborhood and surrounding community is not burdened with unnecessary vehicular traffic. We are willing to continue working with the applicant and the community through the variance and CUP process in order to mitigate the impacts of a com if a commercial use is granted. Um, I know the planning department um, submitted some conditions which we um, are in favor of and the applicant additionally agreed to um, provide a 15 foot front yard setback, modify the height of the project to 34 feet instead of 36 feet if, this, if his CUP and variance application are granted, install a mechanical ventilator with no ventilation openings at the ground level as requested by our office and conditioned by the City Planning Commission December 10th, 2009, work with the community on the landscaping plans. Uh, the commercial parking will only be performed by a valet service access to the commercial parking level will only be accessible through Sunset Boulevard and they're going to try to save and replant the mature trees that currently line the street. We understand that you have the appeal of the track map before you today but we felt it relevant to bring up some of the, these broader issues. We ask that the Plum Committee consider our concerns and comments and grant this appeal in part by adding these conditions as recommended by our office. We fully support the conditions and recommendations of the Planning Department. Um, that's about it. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Vasquez, would you mind coming to the microphone? Uh, the conditions that were uh, described by the district office, uh, are, they, are those conditions that are consistent and support uh, the direction of the staff's uh, report? Well, at the CPC, they added a number of conditions. One was that no openings be permitted on the parking level on the front and side property lines. Also, they required that the applicant work with the urban design studio uh, for um, streetscape and landscaping. So they would be consistent to what uh, so has been adopted. It sounds like we are in agreement with the conditions. Right. And if the applicant is agreeable to the reducing it to 34 feet, that's fine with the department. Okay. Uh, are those conditions that have been discussed? Or? Most of the conditions that were discussed are included in the M&D as reconsidered and they relate to the use of commercial parking if the CUP and the variants are approved. We would agree to reduce the height to 34 and include a 15 uh, foot front yard setback if the CUP and variants are approved. But that's a different process? That's, a, that's at a later hearing. Okay. okay. But for this hearing today, uh, Chairman, there are several conditions that will be adopted with the VTT including no openings on the ground floor level, the fact that the commercial parking will only be accessible through sunset, and various other conditions that relate to the... And that's still yet another process. That will be adopted with the MND reconsideration that was prepared for the VTT. Okay. So, given the discussion before us, uh, Madam Attorney, is there anything else we should state for the record? Okay. So we could... Um, I would rec recommend that we deny in part and grant in part the appeal with modified conditions as submitted by the council office and that be the recommendation of this body. Okay, seeing no one else here for public comment, that will be the action of this committee on item number five and we will probably have to go through this one more time in front of the full council, given that we don't have a quorum for this committee. Anything else, Roberto? Uh, public comment, Councilman? Anybody else here for public comment? Say hello, this meeting is adjourned.